the last thing you want to have to do is rebuild your bubble app. I mean, imagine bringing your users on board only to run into performance and scalability issues as you try to grow. That kind of sounds like a nightmare because rebuilding at that point would honestly kind of suck. So while you don't want to rebuild your app, the reality is if you do need to do that in order to ensure performance once you launch, it would be better to rebuild now versus later. And that's why in this video, we're going to talk through seven specific reasons why you should actually consider rebuilding your app now to make it easier on yourself down the road. It's Kristen over at Coaching No Code Apps. We help non-technical entrepreneurs build custom apps so they can start their app-based businesses or grow their existing businesses all without coding. And if that's what you're doing, then subscribe for new videos to help you every single week. All right, let's get right down to it. Reason number one for why you should consider rebuilding your bubble app. If your database has many redundancies, then you've lost control over where information is saved and what purpose each data type, field, and option set serves. So you should have a very clear understanding of your database architecture. Some redundancies are okay from a strategic perspective, but extra fields is a common trend we see from people with no experience building a database. They kind of just unintentionally overdo it on creating fields everywhere. Remember this when it comes to your database, everything needs to have a purpose. So if you don't feel strongly or confident in this area, then it's a reason to consider going ahead and rebuilding your bubble app. The database really is the core of your app and it needs to be right. The second reason to consider rebuilding your bubble app is if you started with a template and you've tried to make so many modifications to it at this point that it's now unrecognizable in a bad way and you really can't even find your way around. You know, templates can serve a purpose as learning tools, but ultimately we prefer to build apps from scratch versus using templates so that you can understand exactly what you're building and therefore be able to control, manage, maintain, expand on top of it later on down the road. It can be really hard to come in as a new no coder, use a template, and then actually be able to control your app afterwards. So if this describes you, it might be time to consider rebuilding from scratch. It might feel like taking too many steps back, but it can serve you so well in the future. Reason number three to consider rebuilding your app at this time is if all of your pages consistently just run pretty slowly and you don't really know why. You know, as a no coder, generally the, the process of building an app is you come into the space, you learn a little bit about no code tools, and then you build your app as you learn how to use those tools. But what happens is early development is usually not that great in terms of best practices because you don't know what you don't know. And you learn more and more and more as you go. Usually by the time someone is done building their app after just self-building and using trial and error, they realize that they really just need to go back and rebuild the whole thing. So if you're at a point now where things are just slow and you don't really know why, it's probably because you weren't using the best development practices during your early development. And again, you, you just don't know what you don't know. So this is a reason why you should consider going back and rebuilding, start from a clean slate, but make sure to use best practices when it comes to development strategy in general and with using Bubble specifically. Reason number four to consider rebuilding your app is if you started building on Bubble's old responsive engine and you're just having a hard time keeping your designs consistent and getting them to the point where you really want them to be. Go ahead and rebuild your app at this point if that's the case. Switch over to the new responsive engine and it'll make your overall development and design process a heck of a lot easier. Reason number five is if your app has a bunch of band-aids on it. We call this hacking together an app, which is not what you want to be doing. But essentially this means 
maybe having a bunch of third party dependencies that should really be replaced, you know, uh, relying on third parties that maybe aren't performing that well, relying on plugins, these are micro dependencies. Ideally, you want to eliminate as many dependencies as possible because your own performance is reliant on their performance and you can't control those third parties. These band-aids could also come in the form of kind of like band-aid solutions to mask problems that you weren't able to uncover the root cause of. This can happen a lot in development. Something's going wrong, you can't really figure out what it is at its core, or maybe you can, but it's just too big of a problem for you to go back and rebuild. And so you put a band-aid on and okay, it might work temporarily, but in the long run, it's not going to. You can't grow or scale a an app with a bunch of band-aids on it. So this would be a reason to go ahead and rebuild now. Reason number six is if you have over a hundred issues in your app's issue checker and you're kind of lost on how to fix all of them and maybe they're preventing you from going live or if you're already live then maybe they are uh, inhibiting your development experience or even your users experience. If you are swimming in issues, then it might be time to go ahead and rebuild your app. You should really never have that many issues racked up within your editor. Uh, it's, it's gonna make things really difficult on you. And last but not least, reason number seven is just if you're looking to simplify. You know, going back to what we talked about earlier, oftentimes when you start the development of your app, you are learning as you go. And there are tons of ways to build one thing within Bubble. So you can take 10 different paths to achieve the same outcome in general in Bubble, but nine of those ways might be the wrong ways for you and your app and your use case. And so if you, you know, if you do this all throughout your development, then you can have a really bloated, clunky app that just isn't built how it should be. And at some point you are going to have to rebuild an app like that. Either things are going to become too hard on the back end for your own development for you to manage, or things are going to just perform really poorly on the front end or oftentimes both. And if you're looking to simplify, because when you go into your editor, you're overwhelmed, it's hard to find things, your development takes way longer than it should. Again, this might feel like you're taking so many steps back, but it's not a bad idea to start with a clean slate. You know, if you're having some of these issues or if you're experiencing some of the things we've gone through, maybe a combination of a few, then this can be a really great reason to start fresh with fresh eyes, more knowledge, and build a better app because of it. Ultimately, the key here is control. Ask yourself, are you in control of your app? Do you feel confident continuing to evolve it. Ask those questions and be honest with yourself. You know, troubleshooting, issue checking, error fixing, these are all very normal and expected parts of development. But if you spend all your time doing those things and you're finding yourself going around and around in circles and you just can't seem to take significant and consistent steps forward, then it's time to consider rebuilding it's better to do it sooner rather than later. If at this point you are considering rebuilding your app, then I want you to head to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop. This is a workshop to help no code app entrepreneurs actually become no code app entrepreneurs versus entrepreneurs. And one of the things that we deep dive into during this workshop is development strategy to help you leverage bubble correctly, number one, but also use the, the appropriate best practices and development strategy so that you don't have to rebuild your app later on. So if at this point you're thinking, maybe it's the right time to do so, so I can prevent a bunch of headaches down the road, then head to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop so we can help you take these next steps. All right, I hope this was helpful. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.